We just wanted to talk to you a little bit about trends that you're seeing right now with, with customers. Uh, interested, you know, especially on what they're doing online, but also, um, you know, how that plays out in store visits and whatnot. Sure. Um, well, I mean, no secret that online shopping is growing. Um, and for us, we've been through an interesting journey, which is two years ago, we used to have a, an internet business and a stores business and treat the two things completely separately. Um, and we would traditionally monitor how much of our sales is going through website, how much is going through stores in a way that two separate businesses would with separate marketing teams and, and, and separate trading teams. But it's become clear over time that it's the same customer. We're a multi-channel retailer. Um, and so we find that people that are shopping in the stores have, in 80% of cases, been on the website before they get there anyway. Um, and um, most of the people that um, are shopping online um, have some association with the stores, whether it be half of them are collecting the product from the store as opposed to having a home delivery. Actually, 10% of our uh, of our home delivery sales are transacted from within the store online. So that's people using the web from within the store. All right. So the whole thing is completely integrated. Uh, now we're a multi-channel business. And yes, of course, we see a rise in, in web traffic still. Um, and we also see a rise in home delivery sales. But uh, but our web, our web business is, is intertwined with our store business, and we see the two as one. And do you see with mobile devices and tablets uh, growth in terms of traffic and transactions? Yeah, so traffic to the sites continues to grow, um, and this year has been up uh, in excess of 30% year over year. Um, so that's a phenomenal stat. Um, but within that, the mix of devices that it's coming on has changed phenomenally. If I sat here this time last year, about a third, just under a third of our traffic was coming from mobile and tablet, and that had grown from double the year before. Yes. Um, this year, um, we sit at about 45, 46% of our traffic is coming from those two devices. So it really is on a, a, a linear growth uh, pattern, um, to, which, to which point we expect it to be well in excess of 50% by the end of the year. So amazing change in, in device access to the site at the same time as we're seeing a phenomenal growth of traffic as well. So, I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, how do you then think about just making it seamless <clears throat> for customers then cross device, you know, from store to online? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose, the, I suppose the first decision that we made when we saw this trend coming, and I can remember my team coming to me and I said, what do you think it will be in a year or two years' time? And they, 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 they showed me a chart which said, here's what the history is, and here's therefore where we think it's going to go. And it was just literally a straight line to 50% to and then more. So we took the decision when we were redesigning the site uh, two years ago, 18 months ago, to go with a responsive design approach to, to, uh, to our web, website. And the reason that we did that is because we wanted, we recognized that more people were going to come on mobile devices than on desktop devices. We recognized that the customer was, in many cases, the same customer when they're out and about as they are at home. And so recognized that we'd probably get more than one touch point to the site through different devices and wanted to make sure everybody got the same experience. Um, and so we went with responsive design. And that turns out to have been very successful for, 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 for numerous reasons, really. But take it from a customer's perspective. We're a relatively low frequency retailer. People come to us um, for advice. They come to research products. They come to look and understand categories and, and understand what they should be purchasing, either to get a home delivery or to go into store. And if they're doing that at home on a desktop, and then on the way to the store on a tablet or at home on a tablet or then in the store and around the store on a mobile, important for us that they get the same information, that they see the same promotions, that they see the same design and look and feel on the mobile site as they got on the desktop site and get consistency of information throughout. And responsive design gave us that rather than using a, uh, a scrape of the site or, or, a, or a, um, a dot .mobile um, uh, portal. So that's been very good for us internally it's been good for the business because it means I've got one team designing the site. They start mobile first, which is a good way of making sure your mobile experience is, is optimized. Um, and there are some cost benefits to it as well, but probably not as good as, 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 as some would advertise. The principal thing for us is that it's about customer experience. Makes sense, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you, when you then start to think about this complex user journey, so they're on a mobile, like you said, and sometimes they'll go back and maybe go home and finish a purchase or they'll use the mobile and then they'll go yeah. into the store. I mean, how do you think about, 
you know, your, your media mix or how, how you do marketing? We clearly, and I don't know about other retailers so much, but we clearly see a different behavior pattern between mobile and tablet. Um, and so have changed the design slightly uh, and market accordingly. Let me explain what I mean by that. Mobile is very much out and about. It's people out on the street, on the bus, on the train, in the car, wherever, and they are doing mobile things. So looking for store locators, mm. um, making reservations. Nearly twice as many reservations come from mobile devices as do from uh, desktop devices. Because they're on the way, reserving the product, looking to get there and, and, and find it when they get there. Um, and it, accessing the website more directly into product pages. In other words, they've done their research and now they know what they're looking for and are going in. Um, whereas tablet is completely different. Tablet is eff effectively a home device we see, which is uh, a good uh, conversion rate, people browsing through the site start to finish, um, and invariably traffic mix is increasing after 7 p.m. in the evening. Uh, if we advertise on TV, we see a sharp spike in tablet traffic, implying that people are on the sofa using the device to browse, shop, um, and do as they would have done probably on a laptop before. That makes sense. Then how do you how do you attribute value then for someone, say, who's on the mobile site? You mm -hmm. want to get a message to mm -hmm. them to help drive them into your stores. I mean, how, how do you think about that? Um, we, <clears throat> in, we've, we've spent quite a lot of time and effort on mapping, uh, on store locator experience. Um, we've done some work in Solihull and more recently Aylesbury and, uh, and, and Blue Water where we've actually had um, people in to do street view mapping of the inside of our stores. Yes. Um, for a bit of fun really, but actually the principal thing is about making sure people understand where the store is, what's in the store when they get there, do we have shopping shops, do we have, uh, do we have um, what product mix do we have, what's the layout of the store, what should the customer expect when they get there. And yes. um, we've done a lot of that kind of work. Um, and then around marketing is to understand which um, channels we should market to at specific periods in time and also how the marketing mix works together. Yes. So that's that thing I told you about, if someone's watching TV, then actually if we're advertising on TV, our search becomes more effective yes. rather than the other way around. Yes. Um, and so looking to overlap media spends and overlap um, econometrics as well. I see. And the so way we attribute value to marketing is not necessarily any more on uh, advertise, click, purchase, convert, and therefore profit. It's actually longer term now, which is about how much do I attribute value for researching and then how do I uh, attribute value to offline purchase back to online search. We've done a lot of work around that and so have, uh, have changed quite considerably our marketing mix as a result. Makes sense. And when you think about the future then, like uh, how this is all going to play out, uh, you know, with your mobile strategy, with um, how you just keep blending the worlds, as you said, you know, they used to be separate, now they're blending. I mean, mm. how, what are the implications of that in terms of your mobile strategy about what the store experience might be like? We see an increasing conversion rate from search ads that are targeted to users on mobile phones. Um, and so we'll continue to put more investment into that area. Um, we have done a lot of work on our websites around making them multi-channel and understanding a multi-channel experience but increasingly now we'll look at the finer end the user experience end, the checkout end of of, of the funnel if yes. you like and puts a lot more effort in our web development around that um, and that will be different um, for mobile for tablet and for desktop um, but I think we, we still stick with the same principle, which is design mobile first. If that's where the most number of customers are going to end up seeing us, which it will be by, well, by the end of this year, um, then uh, we'll focus our web development um, on mobile and then work it back from there, optimizing it for a tablet customer that's, that's, uh, that's, that's at home and then a desktop customer that's a more traditional user experience. So that's, a, that's the first thing. The next thing is around how we um, put our media mix together um, and our media mix based on, um, based on the device that you're using, based on the time at which you're using it, 
based on the overlap. So if someone's watching TV between seven and nine, that's when I'm going to get the highest return on search based on when customers see my TV advertising because they're sat there watching TV. How can I work with that? How can I work on the message that I put to them? How can I work on the synergies between what they're seeing on the television and what they're seeing in the device? I think we'll see a lot more tie up in the content that we're using. At the moment, it's about optimizing the spend. Mm. How do I optimize the content so that what they see on the device plays off to what they're seeing on the TV? How do I work that out? And then the other two big ones that I think were focused for us are um, location and personalization. So location being when you're out and about, how do I target my, my search and my media spend by your location? Yes. Um, we've got a lot of work still to do on that, I think. And then personalization, which is the higher um, the, the higher likelihood that people are logged into my website or through any other means I know who they are um, gives me um, the opportunity to target them based on who they are, where they are, demographics, what they've shopped on before, what they've looked at before um, and, and be far more um, targeted yes. to the individual rather than just the demographic. That's great, that makes a lot of sense. So really using context, really being more relevant based yeah. on what they're interested in. That's fantastic, Jeremy. Thank you so much for taking the time. Pleasure. Thank you very much.